Hello and welcome. Today I thought I would start my video a little differently because this is my first video in project after taking over the Mixed Media Emporium group that was um, coordinated for many years by Nina Ribina. She is an incredibly talented, creative, and gracious person. Um, she has decided to step back just from her um, Facebook group coordination and um, she will still continue on YouTube and creating and all that. So I was happy, honored to help out and take over the group. I hope I can only do half the job that she <laughs> has done. Um, just I will post a link to her channel and also our Facebook group if you're interested in checking that out. Um, it is a prompt related group, so all the posts have to be related to the weekly prompts and we will have a weekly prompt. I'll do my best to post a video each week of my project following the prompt, but I am nowhere near as talented as Nina, so I can't promise that I will do that every week, but I'll try my best. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to show you is the project that I'm going to be making. I already made one because I wanted to see how it turned out and make sure it worked all right. And this is um, the one I made. Um, I made it from a master board that I'm showing you some other master boards that I have there because sometimes when I am in between projects and I don't want to start anything too difficult, I... Um, or that will take a long time, or I'm not motivated, I'll just put together some master boards like this with scraps of paper, book pages, anything. And sometimes I do stamping on it, sometimes I add paint and things like that. So I already have some prepared, but I'll show you how I do that. Um, the, pro the master board I used uh, for this project has Tea, uh, use tea bags over the top of the paper. I just glued those down and then I lined the inside of the little booklet, folder, um, whatever you want to call it, journal, um, with fabric. I did some sewing. My sewing's really wonky there. It's usually pretty wonky, but on that one I have to admit that I forgot to um, do the sewing before I attach the paper, the inside paper. So I had to put it in my machine um, after the fact, which made it a little more challenging. So I am showing you the book pages that I have taken out. I like to vary the colors, even though they're neutrals, they're all like shades of beige and off-white, um, but I like to vary those colors a little bit and the fonts. You can even use all, you know, um, current book pages if you want. It's fine. Whatever you have. Um, you can use other types of papers. I mean, there are a lot of things you can do. The paper I'm using as my base is 9 by 12 inches and it's I think it was 112 or 115 pound paper. So it's pretty thick but it's not um, too thick because I actually don't want it to be too thick so that I can fold it easily. And I attach my book pages. I just tear them. Sometimes I use a little ruler. Sometimes I just tear them by hand. And I attach them with a matte medium, which is a, a glue and also protects the papers a little bit on the top. I try to vary the colors. As I said, I try to vary the orientation, putting some vertically, horizontally. And I also like to start in the corner, but you can start anywhere you want to. I like to start in the corners for some reason and then kind of work my way towards the center. So I'm showing you uh, what I how I start out and um, it, there's really nothing difficult at all about it. As you can see, I'm using my little ruler there um, and just kind of uh, instinctively putting down my papers this way and that. If you have any little gaps, you can just tear little pieces of the book pages and put them in the um, the gaps that you have. And as I said before, you know, I've used all kinds of papers and pages, uh, magazine pages and map page papers, and I've used um, scrapbook paper. I've used all kinds of things to do these master boards, just whatever scraps I have laying around. So I will 
continue with that one later, but in order to save a little bit of time, I wanted to just keep working with one that I made previously. So the way I did this project, I don't like to measure. I've said this many times. So I just eyeball that little flap that is going to go over the um, cover and then fold that in and there's my little booklet easy as that because it's 9 by 12 I know that my eight and a half by 11 paper that I'm going to put on the inside is going to work I'll show you that later now my papers started on the folds there it started cracking a little bit so I decided to put some of this fabric uh, fabric tape I think it's called by Tim Holtz that's a pretty um, pattern I think and it's very strong and it has some adhesive on it already so it doesn't need extra glue. If you don't have this type of fabric ribbon, you can use actual fabric. You can use washi tape, but make sure you use extra glue. And um, you could even use masking tape too. I've done that before. So I'm adding that on to each side, each fold there for extra um, protection and um, strength and one of those sides is where I'm going to sew my pages into so it's needed there anyway okay so I've done that on both sides and then I'm, I picked out a couple of fabrics that I want to use on the inside um, I like brown and blue so I picked a couple of blues I have and I decided to go with the plaid this is a fairly thin, um, like maybe cotton. I'm not a good, I'm not a real fabric expert, so I'm not sure, but it's a thin fabric. So I'll show you how, again, without any measuring, this is how I do these things. <laughs> it's a little, you know, wonky journal kind of thing. So I don't worry too much about measuring, but, um, I know from making the other one that this worked fine so I just cut it I make a couple of little cuts like as you see awkwardly little cuts there and then just tear it because I like the frayed uh, fabric look on the edges so I want that look I want it to I want to see those little threads on the edges not those super long ones that I pull off and because this fabric is thin I'm going to use my glue stick I've done this before with thin fabric and it works just fine and especially since I'm going to sew the edge around the edges so I know it's not that fabric's not going to go anywhere and this is a good quality glue stick so I know it works well if you have a thicker fabric you'll probably want to use some um, liquid type of glue you could use a uh, like a fabric hack or a craft glue something like that pva glue um, all those sorts of things and um, just know that if you use the liquid glue on a thin fabric it can show through your on the you know when it, because it's wet it'll show through on your the other side of your fabric and may not be the look that you're going for although i've done that before too and um you know it just depends just you know experiment and try um, what you have use what you have so um, as you can see my fabric's not completely straight on there it's a little wavy but um, that doesn't really bother me if you want to make it you know straighter and if that bothers you then definitely take extra time to um, make it more precise I do a lot of things this way just kind of fly by the seat of my pants kind of uh, crafting is what I like to do so I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew it but I want to make sure the glue's dried first because my machine can get really gunked up with with the glue if not okay I took it to my machine I changed my thread to a dark blue as you can see there I wanted to do a zigzag I don't know I've never had this happen before but of course because I'm recording it happened that my machine made this weird stitching thing uh, that you see there instead of a zigzag so I just left it because it's fine again by me it's kind of different looking and um, I really didn't want to you know pull it all out and redo it and make more holes in the paper so that should be a zigzag stitch okay so I took some eight and a half by 11 tea dyed coffee paper 
and I'm using, I folded them all in half as you can see and then I'm just using my ruler to tear them. Again, if you want to cut them to have a straighter edge, that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to have the, um, just have it be quick and easy. And so I have my papers. I used five pages and I'm gonna sew them in with a needle and some waxed thread. I've done this many, many times, so normally I would paper clip there where you see me pressing with my thumb. Um, if I had more pages, um, I would paper clip them together to hold them in place before I do all this sewing. But no, I'm going to do it this way because, again, I've done it many, many times and it's for me it was a simple thing to do. So I eyeballed the middle and then a hole about one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. But, you know, I didn't measure so it's all approximate. And then I'm going to take my waxed thread and measure three, um, the height three times of the booklet. And because it's waxed, it's easy to pinch it and then uh, thread the needle. And I'm going to go through that center hole from the inside out, then go through the top hole. You can go through the top or bottom next, it doesn't really matter, and then go through the bottom hole or the top if you started at the bottom if that makes sense and then back through the center you want to make sure your needle doesn't get caught in the thread because that can give you problems and I've done that before too and you just have to fix it you want to have one thread on one side of your center thread and one on the other side and then I just double knot it and then I trim it. Sometimes I leave it long and dangle beads, buttons, or charms, but this time I'm going to cut it down. And there I have my little booklet. I'm almost done. So I've picked out some vintage buttons that I want to use on the front. I use one on the front. I couldn't decide. <laughs> Story of my life. I have to agonize over every decision. Um, I have some Rib, lace ribbon that I actually bought at the dollar store and I'm just going to measure I know it's upside down there as I'm measuring but I just wanted to get uh, the measurement for how long I wanted it again just eyeballing it <laughs> and I'm going to take that to my sewing machine again and just sew that ribbon on to the um, front just like that I don't worry about the sewing the sewing showing <laughs> I wanted to show you that I did trim some of that fringy thread there on the inside because it was a little bit bulky so I don't mind the sewing showing there <laughs> when I sew my ribbon on I just went back and forth with a straight stitch to sew that on and now I'm going to sew on the button you want to make sure you have a button with one of those little um the holes like that the one they they're like 3d they stick out <laughs> I don't know what they're called but um if not if you have a flat button you're not going to have enough room to put the ribbon around behind it if that makes sense um I hope that makes sense <laughs> so I'm just going to sew the button onto the ribbon part and I don't know if somebody is a sewer they're probably horrified by all of my sewing in this uh, video but I don't I don't really know how to sew truly. I just, um, you know, know how to do a few stitches on my machine and go backwards and forwards. And I've never been a sewer. And so um, I just do the best I can. But this button's not going anywhere for sure after I sew this on. And I'm going to just um, knot it there a couple of times to finish it off. And then I think I'm pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much my little project okay I just wanted to do a little mini wrap up because I didn't want to forget to say that I feel like this project without the tea bags needs a little more protection on the papers I think it could work okay but you can see there a little bit is coming up I just need to glue that down but on top of that I I think I'm going to go back and add some tissue paper just like regular gift wrap tissue paper nothing fancy it's not completely translucent so um, but some of the papers will show through and I think that'll add a nice layer of protection I probably should have done that to begin with but um, 
that's okay. And it honestly, it could stay like this too, unless I'm going to be really rough with it. I think it'll be fine. So I do hope you enjoyed this little quick project and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.